Today's topic would be on recording equivalence and I have really wrote down everything that you need to know because we really need to save time here because we have an example. So let's get down to it. So recording consumers are pretty much the caring consumers. They are the kind of people that don't feel happy with lower taxes because they care for future generation as much as themselves. Because if they have higher taxes now then uh, later on later on in the future, their future generation don't have to pay as much debt as uh, as the current uh, generation incurred. Now the non recording consumers are the are the opposite. They're happy with lower taxes. They only care about themselves and they don't worry about the future. So then pretty much what they say is that, oh, uh, right now we just want lower taxes because we can splurge more. Let the let the later generation worry about the debt. And those are non recording consumers. Now we're going to talk about interest rates and borrowing. And we're going to start off uh, with definitions of nominal interest rate and real interest rate, which I abbreviated with I and R. Now, nominal interest rate is what we see. And that pretty much means that it's the number that you see, the interest rate that you see on paper or something. And that is before inflation. That means that uh, inflation has not. Uh, th that means that the interest rate has not been adjusted for inflation. Real interest rate is the opposite. It's what we feel. Pretty much, it's it's the interest rate that uh, that we have after inflation, after the interest rate is adjusted for inflation. <laughs> and here are the two formulas for real interest rate R and the nominal interest rate I. You can see that I. Uh, noted down that R is the true benefit of lending or the true cost of borrowing because it is adjusted for inflation. Um, so for example, uh, let's say that uh, you are able to uh, lock in, uh, so let's just break this down first. So let's say that you are able to lock in a uh, 7% interest rate. You're, you're able to lock in 7% interest rate interest rate but you're expecting you're expecting you're expecting uh and it you're, you're expecting a three percent rise in prices rise in prices and that's pretty much saying that you're expecting a three percent inflation and remember that the pi symbol is the inflation rate inflation rate so you're expecting three percent rise in, in prices then your real interest rate is your seven percent interest rate which is the nominal interest rate minus the three percent inflation rate that you expect so your real interest rate is four percent which is taken from seven percent minus three percent and that is your uh, real interest rate to get the nominal is just the opposite you take you take your four percent real percent interest rate and you add on the add on the inflation rate to get your seven percent nominal interest rate. Now the, here comes the big example that I'm talking about, and pretty much this is a fact that high inflation, high inflation, uh, benefits benefits borrowers. And it hurts lenders and hurts lenders. So this is what I want you to know that high inflation benefits the borrowers and hurts lenders. And here's the example. So let's let's uh, example. Let's assume that today, today uh, we lent out. Where the in this case we're the lender, so we lent out, we lent out a uh, hundred dollars. So and today, today the shoes, the shoes that are on sale today, the shoes are worth well not on sale. The shoes the normal price for shoes today is a hundred dollars. Okay, now one year later. One year later, uh, what occurred is inflation occurred. 
the percentage doesn't matter, but here's just the concept. So inflation occurred. Now the shoes are $110. The shoes now, one year later, at $110 is pretty much equal to uh, the shoes uh, one year ago at $100. Hundred dollars, one year ago. So pretty much, what happens in inflation is that usually our money, our purchase, our money gets eroded. What I mean by that is that the purchasing power gets eroded. So, so uh, I guess you can say that what you can buy uh, now, uh, like what you can buy now, you can with the same amount of money, you can buy less uh, one year later with inflation. So, uh, so the $100 uh, returned uh, one year later, one year later, is worth, is worth less than one year ago, than one year ago. Maybe it's worth like, maybe it's worth now, one year, one year later with the inflation, maybe the $100 from one year ago is worth $90 in today's, uh, in one year later, uh, in one year later's uh, currency. So pretty much it buys less, buys less. So one year ago when, uh, when shoes were $100 here, uh, we lent out $100. And then after inflation, after inflation, that hundred dollars that we lent out, it's only maybe worth ninety dollars. So that's what I mean uh, when I say that the purchasing power of money uh, uh, eroded. I mean that the hundred dollars lent out uh, a year ago is now worth less and can buy less than we could before. After inflation, that is. And that's all. I no wait, that is not all. There's actually one more thing that I want to you guys to uh, remember and that is if borrowing if borrowing uh, increases and that is not due to uh, changes in interest rate not due to changes in interest rate not due to changes in interest rate, then the the real interest rate R rises, and this is just a fact that you got to remember that if borrowing increases, and it's not due to interest rate, then our real interest rate increases, and remember that borrowing is done. Is done. Is done by consumers, firms, and government. And this is the end of it. This is all I wanted to teach you today. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Uh, it, it'd be a big help and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.